I want to make sure. We're working. Okay. So I'm going to give you his intro and then I'm going to talk to you guys about how I know Jeremy. So he says, hi, I'm Jeremy. I grew up, this is like, it's like an autobiography. Um, I grew up in Oklahoma city, more in Edmond. When I bought my first home in Edmond at the age of 20, I was nervous and had no clue, but I was thankful for my agent educating us through the process and all the different elements of buying a home. After buying and selling several times since then, I realized that there's certain characteristics that a great real estate agent, did you steal this from me? I swear, this is my exact thing on my website. I promise this is straight you from my heart. You swear? This is like I literally promise. what my I've, front page of my website says. I've stolen a lot of stuff from you, but th <laughs> my bio is not. That is <laughs> so funny. AI. Okay. It's not AI either. So after buying and selling several times, I realized there's certain characteristics that a great real estate agent should possess. When I started my real estate career, I made a commitment that I would provide my clients with the type of care and guidance that I was given along the way. While there was a lot, uh, while there is a lot that goes on in real estate transactions, I've developed a love for helping people and their, their largest financial decisions when buying and selling real estate. I've been a realtor for seven years and closed over 350 transactions. I work with a lot of investors and help find off-market properties, flip properties, and rental properties. This experience has given me the knowledge to identify many specific needs of different types of investors. I love talking to people and I've developed a passion for not only helping my clients, but also helping other real estate agents in the industry. I've never met a stranger. There's no problem or there is no problem. Jeremy is not willing to help solve. So, and then he's a runner. So he said on the weekends, he likes to run races with friends and watch his kids play sports. So that is Jeremy's bio. And that is so weird because it is so similar to why I got into real estate. I'll it's tell you so this, Laura, my assistant at the time, she helped write it. I, I'm not that good at writing. At so website. She probably did. <laughs> and so funny, my, my bio on my says the same thing, all similar. So I said that the first time I bought a house, it was a really difficult situation because I didn't know what I was doing. And my realtor really didn't give me much guidance. And we didn't know what to do. And we felt like even the last, I mean, I bought, this is my seventh house or sixth house, I think. And I have never really had a good realtor and I won't tell you who they are, but I've never had a great realtor who really helped explain everything and all that. So um, that's why I got into real estate is be, well, that's not why, but it helps that I had that experience and I know what I don't want to be like. So anyway, Jeremy and I met. I think on Instagram, then we meet on Instagram mm -hmm. and, um, he calls me coach all the time. However, he, he is a great motivator and you are constantly, I don't know how in the world you have time to have 10 to 20 pending homes all the time. You're reading books, you're running, you're doing all this stuff. I don't know how you do it all. Um, but when you will call me and you'll say, or text me and say, Hey, what book are we reading this week? And then I got to come up with a book because, you know, I'm still reading the last one that I haven't finished yet. So <laughs> I always appreciate the motivation. He's always great about sending texts and saying, hey, like, what's your goal today? Let's get you on there. So he's I know that you have really wanted to kind of go more into a coaching type of relationship with agents. And I think that's amazing. So when we were talking about um, last week, we were talking about wholesaling on here. And you, our, our guest speaker was late. And so Jeremy and I started talking about investments and flips and all that stuff. And it was great. It was a good segue until uh, Vanya got on, but this is all about you today. So you get to talk to us about your subject, which is, why don't you say it? You, you give yeah. your, you do your thing now. So, so uh, Nicole, it's such an honor to meet you, uh, man. We've had so much fun together through text and through Instagram. Um, so I'm just honored to be here today. You have a lot of big hitters come and speak at your um, on your Facebook group. And so, uh, first of all, just thank you for uh, taking a risk on me. You never know what I will do or say. Uh, I'm sure you're probably nervous, all that kind of good stuff of like, what is this cat going to do or say? Uh, but I'm going to be super serious today. Is that OK? All right. All right, so I'm going to share, and I've got a whole PowerPoint. Hopefully, I can share it with you guys, and you can help me out with this. But I'm going to go through a PowerPoint presentation. And basically, the idea is um, everyone communicates, but few connect. And so I'm going to share my little PowerPoint presentation. 
Um, let's see if I can find it here. I just made you co-host, so you should be able to share it without a problem. Okay. Let's see if I can find it. We see your Google. Yeah. Let me move this little thing. I can't move. Can I move this thing? Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Um, There's always technical difficulties when somebody tries to share. Yeah, this. and I'm kind of new to the whole. So thing. I think you might have chosen one, your video is gone. Two, I think you might have chosen the wrong window to share. Okay, let's try this. So, okay, so I see what I did. <clears throat> so stop sharing. Let's try it again. Sorry about this. I kind of want to get to it. It's going to be really cool. Let's do this. Is it sharing now? Um, it says it started sharing, but it's not actually sharing. Okay. And your video is still gone. All right. Am I back? You're back, but the screen's still black. Okay. Let's try it again. We should have practiced this. Let's try it now. Oh, no. I want to work. Stop, so stop stop sharing completely okay every i swear every if you guys have been on any of our modern agent blueprints there's always technical issues okay now go ahead and try to share do share screen again make sure when it comes up on your screen mine comes up and there's like many different boxes you can choose just make sure you grab the right one is it up now nope is anybody else seeing anything am i we're just seeing the black okay just the black screen okay see. well Mine says that it's it's uh, it's like loading. It's thinking. Yeah, it says Jeremy yeah. has started screen sharing, but it's not actually sharing. Okay, well, why don't I do this? I will just um, go through the slides myself, and then if it does come up, then um, stop stop sharing really quick. Okay. And do you want to? Could you send it to me really quick, and I can share it? Yeah. I'm gonna do that. So Let's do Jamie just said the same thing. Can you just email the PowerPoint to Nicole? <laughs> yeah. I want to see what you have to offer, Jeremy. Don't leave us hanging. I know, I know. It's 11 11 here in Michigan right now. Make a wish. Okay, let's try this. Okay, so is it working now? There's nothing. You haven't okay. shared anything. <laughs> I hate this stuff. I know. It's so, we, we had this poor girl on who was trying to teach us how to do TikToks and her TikTok thing would not share. And she was so mortified. I felt so bad for her, but she tried. All right. So did you email it to me or did you send it to me? I'm going to share. It's in Canva right now. Down, see if you can download it as a PDF or something, and then, okay. um, and I'll open it up. Sorry, guys. Thanks for sticking out, sticking it out with us here. It's always, always fun. Every, every time, we get, we definitely got to figure out the uh, Zoom share thing. It drives me nuts. So I would propose that we are connecting right now through this trial. There you go. We are <laughs> right there, We're all connecting here. All right. It's emailing you right now. Okay. Oh, dang, say it's too big. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. When you go to share screen, what does it look like? Um, let's and are up. you on a Mac or? Uh -huh, I'm on a Mac. Yeah, Mary says, share the Canva link with me. So you should be able to go in and take the, go up to like you're going to download it and send me the link or you can even send me the template and I can open it up and I can scroll through. All right, let's do this. Good thinking. Mary is the bomb. All right, I just emailed you the link. Okay, I'm gonna grab it. 
I'll keep, I will fly through it. You're fine. You'll be fine. We'll get it. You said you emailed it to me? Uh huh. Okay, hold on. Oh my gosh, it says I don't have access. Okay, I'm requesting access. I don't know what you have to do to do that. Or Chuck, you can send it to me again, but go up and send it to me as a template. That way I can just access it. Okay, I just, I just okayed it. Okay, let's try again. Okay, so while we're waiting on this, um, I I think are you in it? Yep, but go ahead. You can you can start. Okay. So while she's nominated. pulling it up, I got a couple of things to announce. One is we're doing a huge conference in two weeks, and I got chosen to be the MC. So we've got five hundred um, agents that are that are attending this conference. It's a real estate conference here in Oklahoma City. Um, and so I'm excited. I'll be emceeing the conference. So I'm super excited about that. And then two is, I don't know what town you're in, but in Oklahoma City, we have this thing called Real Producers, like the top 500 agents. And I got chosen to be um, the Elevator Award. So that basically means that you help lift people up. And so that's what my goal is today, is to help lift you up. So here we are, we're going to go through some slides and she's going to kind of go with me. We're going to tag team this. Um, so basically the idea is, is, um, are you on right now? Is, yeah, I'm trying. It, it's, it's saying screen sharing's paused. What in the world? Why are we having so many issues? It, can you guys see it? Yeah, I can see it. Hi everybody. I'm here, but. I can't turn my camera on. That's okay. Um, okay, can you guys see this full screen now? Yes, yes. perfect. Perfect. Okay. Sorry, You're Jeremy. Going. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to go forward. Is no, that okay? I think I'm trying it out to see if I can. Okay, let's just let's just rock right here. So basically, the whole idea is basically I love people. I love leadership. Um, I love thinking about leadership. So here's a little background about me. Um, I was in a leadership development title. I helped work with young people. Uh, they would graduate high school, and before they would go to college, they would do an internship. And so I was over them for several years. I was on staff for 12 years doing that. I also was a graphic designer, so I love marketing. I love thinking about things. I've gotten way behind on the whole graphics world. I'm a Photoshop guy. Now there's a lot of fancier stuff with Canva. I also worked with in the nonprofit world for foster kids. I used to help uh, speak at churches and, and events to raise money for foster kids. So I'm a CASA worker. I love helping foster families. Um, I got my license in 2017. I do about 50% retail deals and then 50% um, investor deals. So if you want to click to the next page, um, Nicole will kind of go through this together. So basically, here's kind of the introduction of what I want to speak about. Basically, we get our realist, we, we want to get into real estate because one, we think that we want to help people. Two is we want maybe freedom because uh, we want the freedom that provides for us, for our family. And then three is obviously we want to make money. We hear that real estate agents make a lot of money or there's a potential. There's no limit to what you can make in real estate, those type of things. So, you know, we get our license, we go to real estate school, we get our license, and it doesn't teach us hardly anything about how to get business. So today we're going to talk a little bit about getting business and, and what that looks like. And, you know, they just say, you know, in real estate school, they just say, hey, just talk to more people and you'll get business. It's just, it's just that easy. And it really is not. It is not that easy at all. So we're going to go to the next slide. And so basically, especially, you know, we go, we go and we're like, man, how can I grow our business? And so we think of all these ideas, uh, whether it's social media, 
um, whether it's, you know, whoa, that's a brilliant idea or open houses or we go to conferences, events, and we're looking for the best idea that's going to grow our business. And what I see that as is those are communication tools. So it could be open houses, it could be cold calling, it could be Facebook ads, it could be whatever the tool is to communicate yourself out into the public. So go ahead and go to the next slide. We'll kind of fly through these and get to the nuts and bolts. So here's how I've broken up. I've broken up communication on the left and then connect, which is goal accomplished. So communication could be tools like social media, it could be phone call. It's, it could be you calling people that you know, that you trust. It could be, oh, I don't like talking to people on the phone. I just like texting people. So that's your, your way of communicating to people. Uh, three could be Facebook ads. You throwing yourself out on Facebook and you're posting different things and doing ads to do landing pages and then having Facebook conversate with them until it gets to you to lock the deal up, whether it's a listing appointment or get the home under contract or a closing. So the goal obviously is to get in front of the people, whether the listing appointment, a buyer's consultation, so that way you can get them as a client. Obviously you wanna get to the place where you get them under contract. And then three is to celebrate the closing. My favorite thing is a closing with a nice cookie. And that's my, I love closings because I that's the one time that I celebrate with a cookie. So we're going to dive in a little bit deeper. Let's go to the next slide. And this is kind of where it kind of gets to the nuts and bolts of it. So here is Connect. So here's kind of where maybe we might conversate a little bit or take some notes is connect. Number one is I put understanding people's personalities. You know, you might have, like I said, have a great social, you might have a great way to connect with people to have that, that uh, avenue to connect with people. Maybe it's Facebook, maybe it's through uh, social media. And so then once you get to a place where you have a conversation with them, then you have to learn how to connect with them through different personalities. So somebody like myself that I like to have conversations, joke a lot um, and be super, super friendly, it might throw somebody off that's more business minded. And so you have to read the different personalities. And so if somebody's more business minded, then I'm like, OK, let's cut to the chase. They're not really into the into the joking or talking about family or friends. They are specifically about the house. What does it matter about my friends and my family? What does it matter about what I do for a living? What does it matter about that? And so learning to do different personalities. It's somebody I like to think of understanding people personalities is mirroring. Maybe you've heard the idea of mirroring per people's personalities. If icon Nicole is serious, then it's I need to be serious. If she's funny, then maybe I need to add a little bit of fun to, to try to make that connection. So we're communicating, but are we connecting with our clients in a way that they would want to work with us? I wouldn't even say clients at the time, maybe prospects or people that you're wanting to earn uh, your, your business with them. Number two is what is your language like? So these are questions I want you to ask yourself when you're connecting with people. What is your language like? I have, I used to tell my interns this uh, for years. These are three cuss words that I do not want my people that work on my team or the interns that I worked with years ago. These are three cuss words. You can write them down. Three cuss words that I don't, I don't allow myself or other people. One is busy. Who wants to work with a busy agent? It's the worst turnoff in the world. If I'm if I'm telling myself that I'm if I'm telling others I'm busy, then they will say, well, they're probably too busy to work with me. And so I, you know, I might be busy or productive right now. And I've even had people that say, oh, I'm afraid to send you this. I'm afraid to send this to because you, you seem really busy right now. And I'm, I have to look at myself and say, well, how am I putting myself off? I don't want to put ever put myself in a place that makes it sound like that I'm too busy for another client. Does that make sense? Um, so the, the next cuss word is tired. 
The next, the next cuss word is tired. Like who wants to work with a tired agent? I know that you've got a lot going on. Um, and I'm not saying that you need to be fake. Obviously, we want you to be authentic with your clients or maybe your prospects. Maybe you can be authentic once you get them <laughs> under contract, then you can kind of loosen up a little bit. But who wants to work with a tired agent? Who wants to work with somebody? And so when I hear somebody that's saying they're tired, I'm like, maybe they need to rest. Maybe they need to rest. I don't want to put anything on them because it sounds like they're already tired. So stressed. And then the third one is stressed. Um, if you're already stressed, would I, do I want to bring on more stress? Because my situation, my real estate transaction, I don't want to bring on my stress to another stressed out uh, agent or another stressed out person that I'm about to work with. So watch your language. What is your language like on social media? Are you... Um, you know, what is your social media like? Is it is it positive? Um, I know Nicole, you know, mentioned that that I try to inspire people because to be honest with you, we're in an we're in a um we're in a job and a career path that you know what we say speaks volumes, what we communicate speaks volumes. And is it connecting or is it disconnecting? Is it attracting people to us or is it repelling people to us? Um, so the third thing about um, connecting with people is our tone. Um, I had somebody on my team for a short time, and his tone was horrible. He was not um, listening to understand people. He was listening to how he could already have a comeback. And his tone was very maybe sarcastic or very rude, or it was like he was trying to win a conversation instead of trying to understand. So number three is our tone. Um, how are we connecting with people through our tone? Um, are we inviting? Or are we condescending? Are we sarcastic? What is our tone like? Uh, number four is follow-up. Uh, are you staying connected to people through follow-up? Are you following up on a basis or are, you or are you dropping the ball by staying in touch with people? Uh, number five is how are you making them feel? Are you making them feel like... Um, they just don't know what they're doing. Are you putting them down? Maybe it's a for sale by owner and you're putting them down or are you making them feel like, hey, let me take this burden off of you. Um, this is what I do 24 seven. Let me take this burden off of you or or how are you making them feel? And then, and then the last thing six is staying in contact with them. How are you contacting with them? Are you really pushy with them? Or are you asking them for permission to stay in contact with them? And so those are some ways that you connect with people. Um, I'm sorry, I've kind of flying through this. Hope this makes sense to you. Um, but these are the ways that we can connect with people. Um, Nicole, do you have any thoughts about that so far? Hold on, hold on. I, I can't hear you. I forgot I muted myself. Oh, you're good. Um, Go ahead. Yeah, it was really good. But I had a question. Did you say four cuss words? Because I only wrote down three. Sorry, that... three. Sorry, three Wait. cuss words. Okay. I was like, all right. I, I want to make sure I got them all written down. Uh, no, I think this is great. It's perfect. Um, I'm right on with you. So I'm going to keep going here. We're gonna yeah, move. yeah. We'll go to the next slide. And so here's here's kind of like, there's two different agents that I see. I, you know, like I said, I, I close a lot of transactions. So I interact with a lot of agents. Uh, I network with a lot of agents. So I kind of sit back and figure out what there's different types of agents. And so these might come across as extreme and you might be like, well, I don't feel like I'm in either one of them. And so that could be a good or bad thing. And so I, I kind of divide up agents into two paths. So most of us can go to one extreme or another based upon your personality styles and still don't connect. So the one is you might go to the next slide is a sales agent. Um, the sales agent is all about trying to sell themselves on why they are the best. And they're all about winning, whether it's the for sale by owner, whether it's the open house, and they are so pushing their, their skills or their value that they're not even connecting with the, with the actual prospects. They're all about themselves. Um, and so the next agent 
is I just call it simply a realtor. They love to talk about houses. They love to talk about the neighborhoods. They love about that. And they're not able, they're not connecting with the clients or the prospects or getting information from them so they know how to relate to the people. And so let's kind of go through the next deal. And so here's here's some different things that obviously you've read in books. I'm sure a lot of there's a lot of people here on this group. And so we're going to kind of go through some different exercises, but one is very big right now is motivation. You know, if you are talking to people, are you getting to people's motivation or are you just talking about what you're doing? Or are you, when you're having simple conversations, when I'm just sitting with somebody at a football game and I'm having conversations with them and they know I'm in real estate. So then they ask me questions about the market then I start asking them about their motivation. Hey, what do you, what is the pain? What do you not like about your house? Maybe they complain about their HOA. There's drama in their HOA. Uh, maybe they're frustrated because they want some more land for their kids, you know, four wheelers or whatever, or pleasure. And so for you to connect with your clients, you can communicate all you want, but if you're not finding out their motivation, whether their pain or their pleasure, you are not connecting with them. And so when I'm talking to people in my office and they're telling me about their, a new listing they have, the first thing I will always ask is, hey, what, what's their motivation? Why are they selling? Because me as a, a real estate coach or somebody that loves to get into the deeper things of real estate, if, a, if, a, if an agent doesn't know their motivation, that makes me nervous. I begin to wonder when things get tough and there's not a truly deep motivation when there becomes to be a tough market right now, when price reductions need to take place or things like TRRs or repairs and tough things take place, is there a deep motivation for, for there to continue to move forward? And so if you as an agent, we have to go deeper than just trying to help people buy and sell a home, just getting the, to the next appointment. If I, when I go to appointment on a listing appointment, whether it's for a for sale by owner or canceled expired or somebody that I don't know, even if it's somebody that I do know, I want to know a deep motivation before I get dressed up, before I take get gas to go out to where they're at. I want to have a deep motivation of one, either their pain point or two, their pleasure. What are they hoping to accomplish? What are they hoping to move to? And so we'll kind of go to this next slide. Um, it's kind of the same slide, just a little bit different. And so I'll give a quick story on this one. One is once a year, I will send out or I'll do appointments with my past clients just to drop off comps. I will just drop off comps, let them know how much value their home has gone to. Uh, I learned this from the Ninja Selling book, and I hadn't talked to these people in a couple of years. And so I start implementing this and I called and I said, hey, I just simply want to drive by, drop off uh, uh, your comp packet, let you know how much your home is valued. They're like, listen, please bring it over. And I was like, wow, this is pretty intense. And they said, we want to move as soon as possible. I had no idea at this point. I was just kind of implementing this. And I said, well, why would you want to move? You've only been there for three years. And so I had never, I didn't even have that idea of listing their home at this point. They simply said, we are to the point, we want to shoot our neighbor's dog. <laughs> and I was like, so I went over there. They live in a cookie cutter neighborhood. The houses are real close together. And literally, we're sitting in their beautiful home, and the, the, the neighbor's dog was barking nonstop, and that was their pain. Their pain was, we want to get away from this dog. And we literally, they'd only been there three years, and you know, obviously, the market had gone up, and so it was worth it for them to move. Um, and so they ended up moving simply because of a dog, of a, a, a loud dog. And so all that to say is that when you're talking to people, this is just simple conversations. When you're at a football game with somebody, when you're mingling, when you're mingling, you're at a, a Christmas party or something, ask, simply ask people like, hey, what do you hate about your house? Get to the deeper levels than, hey, what is the market like? 
Um, let's go to the next the next slide. And I want to kind of maybe give some examples. So here is a good example of of communicating with people. So so here's a for sale by owner. Um, you know, a lot of people are calling for sale by owners right now because they're having a little bit of trouble selling their home. And so what are you communicating to people? What kind of questions are you asked? So here's some great examples that I use when I'm communicating with them. And these are, as you look at these questions, they have hardly anything to do about the house. Um, so, so the question is, if you're a real estate agent or realtor, a realtor be like, oh, that's a nice house or things like that. I don't really, I mean, honestly, I'll sell anything. You, you can ask some people in my house. I've I've sold burnout houses. <laughs> I've sold crazy houses. But what I want to get to is their motivation. Are they really motivated? Or are they just throwing it up on the market and seeing um, what happens? So here's some questions that I communicate in an effort to connect with um, with the actual seller. So uh, one is, are you open to an agent bringing you a buyer? So that will bring up some questions if they'll be like, nope. And then you kind of have an idea when I, where you're building these questions up, you're having an idea if they're really motivated. So if they say yes, but we have an agent that if we don't sell in 30 days, we have an agent that might be helping us. So these questions are very intentional because you want to know what their motives are. Um, the next one is, where are you moving to next? So it could be, hey, we're building a home. We just started in nine months. So we're just throwing it up. So that simply means they're not really motivated now. They're just kind of seeing what happens. Number three is I always just say, hey, great house. And then I kind of go into the pain and pleasure point, meaning like, hey, what do you love about your house? What do you not like? Why, you know, what do you hate about your house? Or what's, what's caused you to want to sell your home? Uh, number four is what is your timeline in selling? When you find out their timeline, then you kind of get an idea of what their motives are. And, and hopefully it opens up. Maybe it could be, hey, we, we got a death in a family. You know, something's going on. We want to move as soon as possible. And so that's where you kind of find out their motivation. Number five is this kind of helps you find out um, where they came up with this price. Maybe they have an agent that's helping them come up with this price. So it could be, hey, where did you come up with the price on this home? And so it could be, oh, well, an agent just gave us some comps. Well, then it kind of gives you an idea. Oh, well, they have somebody in the background helping them. And so when they're really ready, they'll probably use them. Um, number five is how, how's the showings going? So meaning if they say, well, we haven't had very many showings, we haven't had this, then that's where you can come in and tell your, tell them about the showings that are taking place on your listings and all the things that's happening in the market. So if it's been for sub owner for 30 days and the market, they go under contract within 15 days, then you can bring your value of like, Hey, have you thought about bringing on the market um, and that type of thing? Uh, the last one is how long do you plan to do it on your own before you start researching a professional? That sounds a little bit harsh, but we do this every single day. And so I ask that all the time. How long do you plan to do before you start have wanting a, a professional to list your home for you? Um, and so these are questions that are Look, look at them. They're, they have nothing to do about the house. Maybe one has something to do about the house. But the whole idea is to connect with this people, find out questions that connect with them in a way that draws that connection. So that way you can build rapport with them, that you can connect with them. And so what are you communicating? So the question is, what are you communicating when you're talking to for sale by owners? These are questions that are just these are questions that I've worked with other people or seen people, and I feel like these are great questions that help build, um, that not only just communicate, but connect with people. Uh, Nicole, do you have any thoughts on that so far? No, I, well, I was just thinking, so um, I, I was just thinking about some of this. Now, I guess my question would be is, 
and maybe, I mean, I know you're not really talking about this, but like some of the like objections. So like there's, there's an agent who's on the call right now, who is dealing with a, a guy who he almost seems like he should be FISBO, but he's, you know, he's like, a um, he is listed with an agent, but he, all of these questions, I was telling her, like, you should start asking some of these questions because we got to get to his motivation of why he's not wanting to lower the price, why he's not wanting to get the house, you know, sold. And I mean, we talked a little bit about this, like trying to figure out like, where is he moving next? Like, what is his motivation? What are, what does he really need to do? And I'm also thinking about this too, like, you know, the connection thing. I feel like when you look back at your transactions and you look at some of the deals you've done that have gone really well and some that have gone like not so well, or maybe you just didn't have a good connection with them. What, could have been better, what you could have changed. And I think some of these questions, I think like, I, I just got a new buyer today who uh, messaged me from Instagram. So I'm getting ready to have a conversation with her on Wednesday and, you know, thinking about some of these things. And, and one of the one, there's a agent here, he's a KW agent. And one of the things that he says for, instead of what's your timeline is kind of like, when would you like to be settled? When do you want to be settled into your new home? So saying things like that, instead of what's your timeline, they might not know what their timeline is, or they might not have a realistic timeline. So if you say like, hey, when are you trying to be settled into your home? Do you want to be settled by Christmas, by New Year's, by whatever, Valentine's Day, whatever it may be, um, figuring out when they want to be settled and ready to go to the next step. But like thinking about these questions when you're doing even like your buyer, your buyer consultations, your listing consultations, not necessarily just FISBO, but all of your um, mm -hmm. transactions, because even still, like, even if you're doing this and I don't know if your next slides go into this, but even when you're working with a, a seller, they have a price, like they might tell you that they don't have a price, but they have a price in the back of their head. And, you know, it's kind of, you got to really get to that. Like, where did you come up with this price? I, I have a house right now that I have to try to sell and it's probably a teardown. And I've, to be honest, I've never done this before. I've never dealt with a house that's in that utter disrepair and they want 190 for it. And I'm like, think in my mind, you're out of your friggin' mind. Like there's no yeah. possibility you're going to get 190 for a teardown. So I, you know, I'm like, I want to know, where did you come up with this price? <laughs> you know, and I asked her, where'd you come up with this price? And she's like, oh, well, we had a realtor tell us that we could sell it for 250. And I was like, that realtor was lying to you. There's no way you're going to get 250 for this house. So anyway, question, it's just, it's about digging in. And what I was trying to get at before is some of these, when I have worked with agents, or I'm sorry, worked with buyers and sellers that the, the deal has gone really, really well. And I felt really connected is because we got to all the answers to these questions. And I mm -hmm. felt like I knew their motivation. So when they were struggling, like, let's say they lost out on a couple of houses, I could be like, Hey, we're going to get you settled by this date, or we're going to make sure we can get you into that school by next year. Like we're going to make this happen. So, you know, knowing what their motivation is, it helps them refocus, I think too. Well, and the thing is, is like, we want to have these hard conversations now when things are great. So when we have inspections or repairs come up, that we can go back to that motivation that we can say, hey, listen, we're in a tough place right now. But do you remember we need to get you to your family in Florida or whatever that motivation looks like? And so that's why it's important to have those tough conversations now to get to the deeper level when things are great. So that way, when when things bad things happen, because we obviously know there could be bad things happen to transaction that you can go back to that motivation. So here's just another go to, go ahead and go to the next slide. And here's just another example. So just a, when you're communicating at an open house, this is just another quick example. Um, these are just some good talking points. Good. I want to just go back to good communicating points to connect. Because I found, I know this, when I first started doing open houses, I was trying to sell the house. Um, I was trying to sell the house. I was like, oh, it has granite countertops. Oh, that's a great neighborhood. Great this. And through failure, through not connecting, I realized that I need to connect with the people. And so my first couple of questions is what brought you to this house? Um, what did you like about this house that that wanted you to come check it out? Is it the schools? Is it the neighborhood? Was it the curb appeal? Um, and then I start, literally, I start talking to them about 
their house. Hey, what do you love or hate about your current house that's causing you to even be a looky-loo, to causing you to even want to get out and look at houses? And so what are you looking for in your next home? And so those are questions. I have a friend um, that we kind of challenge each other that we're not going to be a Vanna White. A Vanna White is just an agent that goes in and was like, look at this, look at the refrigerator, look at these stainless steel appliances, you know, look at this. Instead, and then you walk away is like, and then you like, I, I knew nothing about those particular people that came into my open house. Instead, dive in deeper. I know I had a conversation with um, this young couple. This happened a couple years ago. A young couple came into my open house and they were like, hey, we're moving here from West Virginia. And they were young, hipster looking people. They looked like they they wanted to hang out at all the cool coffee shops and all the cool people. And so I was telling them all the cool places about Oklahoma City. I didn't even tell them about the house. I mean, they could see the house. They could see it had three bedrooms. I didn't have to tell them that they know how to count. Um, <laughs> and so I was telling them, oh, man, we have Empire Pizza. We've got this cool coffee shop. We've got this. And a, I literally did not get their information. I was so bummed. We had a great conversations, just great connections. And when they left, there was other people was coming. So they kind of slid out. And the very next week, I was running a half marathon in Kansas. And I literally get done from running a half marathon and pull out my phone. And they text and message me and said they wanted to use me because they love the connection. that They're like, we went to 20 different open houses and you were the one that we connected with most. And so when, when people are coming to open houses, they're not just looking at the house. They're honestly looking at agents too. Which agents do they want to connect with that they want to work with in the future? And that's what they were doing. They were here for a weekend and they were going to look at houses. And then honestly, they were looking at agents that could be working with them while they were back home in West Virginia, if that makes sense. So these are some questions that when you're communicating, how are you connecting with the people? And so uh, hopefully, did you have any questions about that before we move on? Nobody? Okay, let's move on. So here is, and like I said, I don't know all the different backgrounds of people that are that are here today. But what I know is that when when obstacles come, you have to think about it. Most most people that are buying and selling a home, they they probably haven't done it in the last five or seven years. And so when stress comes, when um, obstacles or objection comes, these are kind of the tools that I use that are in my kind of tool chest. And so, you know, when stress comes, then these are some things that maybe you want to write down. These are discussed all over in different training manuals. I didn't, this isn't something I use. It's something that I, I use almost every day. So it's this, it's feel. First, you let the customer or your clients know you can relate to how they feel. That way they don't feel like they're all alone. And some of them feel like, oh my gosh, I probably am letting you down in this situation. You're like, no, 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 no. This happens in every transaction. There's stress that happens in every transaction. And then two is felt. I've had another customer that's been in your same situation. They have felt this way. And what I have found out that we're still going to close. Maybe we need to move closing. Maybe we can do this. Maybe we can ask the seller to do this. And so these are ways that you can connect with your, with your clients. And so what you want to make them feel is that they're not alone, that they might feel like this is the worst transaction, the worst thing that's ever happened to them. Maybe just like for you, Nicole, you talked about how you know, your buyer, like, hey, listen, we lost on multiple offers. And they feel like that they're the only person losing out on multiple offers every time. And you're like, listen, I feel your pain. I can relate. We, I've had clients in the past that we've lost to multiple, multiple offers. And we've gone this way. And I felt, and you know what? This is what's happened before. I'm not going to let you down. We are going to find the right home for you. And so this is a great tool that hopefully you can use in the future that if you're going through situations. So, uh, for example, I was working with an agent here in our office. It was a horrible divorce situation. 
that the husband was being a total jer jerk. The ex-husband was being a total jerk to the agent. And she was about to fire them. And so she called our broker. And our broker was like, listen, bring Jeremy in. He loves to work with difficult people. <laughs> <laughs> And so basically we tag team the situation because she would she would text text her all at night, drunk, saying horrible things to her. And, you know, this poor agent in my office was just like, I just want to fire them, you know, this, this, this and this. And so I came along and I was like, OK, I'll deal with the husband. You deal with the wife and let's tag team this. So we put their home on the market. We got an offer on it. Full price offer. But the TRR here in Oklahoma, we have what's called a TRR where they ask for repairs uh, to be done on the house before we close. And let me tell you, that repair list was two pages long of all the things this particular buyer wanted done to this property. And the other agent called me and was like, OK, Jeremy, what are you going to do? <laughs> kind of like I'm going to have to talk to the, the husband to deal with this. And I just basically used this feel. Hey, listen. You need to sell your home. I feel that you're going through a tough time right now. I have you know, went through this whole thing with them. And basically what I said is, hey, when is the last time you've made repairs on this home? And the guy basically said, I haven't done a thing to this house in seven years. I think he was even drunk. I mean, he was just like, I haven't done a thing to this house in seven years. I said, that's great. That's perfect. Because you know what? Everything that these people are asking are simply things that you should have done the last seven years. They're literally just asking for deferred maintenance. And he said yes to every single one of those things on there because we went through this whole thing uh, to the feel, felt, and found. And the other agent, Ashley, was like, oh, my gosh. I had her on three-way, and she was just listening. She was like, how did you get that guy to agree? She thought it was a busted deal. But it was because we had to review. These are things that you should have done at, when you were living at your house. They didn't work. So here's some ways that you need to go through it. And so we found out a solution that worked. Obviously, we didn't fix those items. He just lowered the price and just moved on. And we were able to get that thing accomplished. So write these things down. These are a great tool to connect with people when you're going through an obstacle or say you're going through multiple offer situations and you're feeling like, man, I'm I'm about to disconnect. I'm about to disconnect from my clients. And these are some way that you can bring your clients uh, back around. Let's go to the next slide. We've just got well, a little I bit. I was going to say, I know we're getting close, but I wanted to say, like, I think what's important here is stories. So stories always help. So stories help with tough situations when agent, when your buyer or seller doesn't want to listen to the advice you're giving, um, you know, being able to say these things, but also, you know, turn it into a story, whether the story is fictitious or real, you can at least have a story that goes along with what you're trying to portray to them to help them understand what you're trying to get at, which is obviously going to be what's going to be best for them in the end. No, that's perfect. That's perfect. Um, and so obviously we'll skip this slide because we were just going to maybe use some different examples. So here's the, here's basically what it comes down to um, is that have you been rejected? I recently, I've lost four listings in the last several weeks. And every one of those rejections, I had to take a self-evaluation. I wasn't upset with them. They're horrible. They're horrible people. They, sh they should have chose me. I'm the best agent in Oklahoma City. Nothing like that. I, I asked myself these questions. Was it a communication issue? Did I not communicate my value? Or did we just not connect? So it could be communication. Maybe I didn't follow up enough. Maybe I didn't tell them about my system or my process. What did I, what did I not communicate, regardless of who they were, regardless to what kind of clients they were, regardless of how difficult they, what did I not communicate for them not to choose me? So one, that's a communication issue. Two is, or did we just not connect? Did we just not connect? Maybe it was a personality issue. Maybe it was that I didn't find out their motivation and somebody else connected with them in a greater way. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, you can't serve everybody. I mean, you know, you really can't. You know, you're not going to be able to work with every single person and that's okay. Um, and so when you get rejected and we're all going to get rejected, 
at times. You know, our own friends, our own family is going to reject. I had I had my brother-in-law decide to use another agent to sell his property just a year ago, my own brother-in-law. And he just thought that I was too busy. He literally thought I was too busy. And he thought that I wouldn't give him a discount, which I probably shouldn't have. But he went with a new person and the new person did not do the job. And so then he was asking me how to help the new agent out. And I was like, bro, what is happening right now? And so anyways, I was able to help him. Tough situation, whatever. Let's go to the next slide. And so these are questions that you should ask yourself. Um, was it a system issue? So these are some of the questions that I just went through, but basically, was it a system issue? Um, a lot of things can come down to systems issues. Maybe it's maybe after you talk to somebody over the phone, you're immediately mailing them a card. Hey, great talking to you. Can't wait to meet with you. Here's my card. Uh, maybe. So what I've been doing is every listing appointment that I go on, I give them a gift card. Maybe it's the Sonic. Maybe it's the Starbucks. And that gift card, it's $5. It's almost like I literally just gave them a $5, $5 bill. But because it was to Starbucks or Sonic or somewhere like that, it seems like a big stinking deal to people. And that's what I've noticed has worked because it made them feel good. It made them feel special versus every other agent came to just as a competition, came to just be a sales agent instead of trying to make them feel good about the situation. So did I follow up enough? Was it a low motivation on their part? And so then maybe I dropped the ball. And then when their motivation changed, I was not there for them. There was somebody else uh, there for them. Uh, the other one is, did we connect on personality? Maybe they wanted somebody that was more like D personality. And I'm more of an I personality. I'm an ID. But when you get the note, when you get, I'm very I at front. I'm very fun, goofy, and those type of things. But when it gets to business, then that's when I get really uh, serious into the transaction. So the next slide. So basically, you know, Nicole, she's been super great about having different guest speakers. I know we had wholesaling last week. We've had get we've had gifts. I think we had like uh, drop drop buys. We've had like social media. We've had like e blasts. We've all had all those th different things, and those are all ways to communicate. But the idea is if it works for them, then you're thinking, well, I want that to work for me. But I want us to think that self-mastery is learning to grow in the confidence in what you do. So when these people come on to uh, Nicole's you know, Zoom like this, is they are super confident. I mean, that is their niche. That is what they go after. And so for you, whatever that you do, Whatever, whichever way that you communicate, whatever style and way that you communicate, learn to grow in the confidence in what you do. And so regardless, people will choose who they know, like, and trust. So how can they help? How can you help them know you, like you, and trust you? And at the end of the day, you can grow all you can and you won't connect with everyone. But that's what I really want us to hammer hammer down today, because most questions that when we have guest speakers, when we have things, we're asking things, well, how did you do this? Or, hey, how did you get more of this? And it really came down to the speakers might not communicate it because they're like, oh, well, I just did this. Like last week, the wholesaler girl, she was like, oh, it's just easy. I just knocked this out. And it, to her, it's easy because she she just communicates. But what it came down to was she connected in a way that made the sellers want to work with her. She was able to communicate with investors that whenever the deal came by, she knew she could bring an investor too. Um, Nicole, does that make sense? Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, so for those of you who did not see last week's Modern Agent Blueprint, I would agree. Yeah, I mean, I think everything is easy once you know what you're doing. So, you know, as with anything in any business and any hobby, I just had this conversation with my son the other day you're bad at everything until you're good at it. So until you are, you know, you've practiced and you've done this, like he's, my son's going, my son's in sixth grade this year, they get to do all these different, try different sports and they get to do, it's like short bursts of sports. So they can try a bunch of different things, which I think is brilliant. And there's no tryouts. So everybody gets to try everything. And then seventh grade, they start tryouts. 
my son's like, I don't think I want to do any sports. I'm just really not good at it. And I'm like, what do you, you have no idea if you're good at wrestling because you've never done it before. So you need to try it because you need to see, maybe you end up really liking it, or maybe you really like um, lacrosse or whatever it may be that you want to play. And he's like, no, I don't know. So we had to have the whole conversation of, you know, everybody's bad until they're good. Same thing in real estate and business and in anything really, and literally anything. It's not like people pick up pottery and all of a sudden they're creating these beautiful creations. Like it takes time. You can't just know how to do it. Of course, there's always those like people who are just naturally good, but they're not the best. They're just good. And you just get better and better. So I like, I love all of this. I think it's so smart. And I think, you know, I think we use the no like, and trust thing. I think we use that a lot in social media, but 100% it's in person too, because mm-hmm. you can be this person online and you can be like the person that they, they really feel like they've connected with. But when you meet them in person, you're like, this is not what I thought it was going to be like. So I think it's, it's important to, you know, 100%, you know, be true to yourself and be authentic online and in person and have that grow those connections with people. And, um, you were talking a shoot. I just lost what I was going to say. You were talking about something earlier and I, I really liked what you were saying, but it was mainly about, Oh, going back and reevaluating why you might've lost that transaction. So the house, for instance, the house that I was just talking about, that's a teardown. I interviewed for this with, it was a referral from another agent. I met with the lady Turns out she wanted to go with a different realtor. And I I asked, the guy came back, circled back around and said, hey, my, my aunt's ready to go or can you help? And I said, no, she went with another realtor. And he said, oh no, that didn't work out. And I said, well, why? What happened? Like, why did she choose to go with somebody else other than me anyways? And he said, oh, well, it was recommended by a lawyer. And, but the guy wanted to charge 10% commission and then more on top of that. And I said, and he said, you know, they, that's why they ultimately went away, but she was just taking advice from the, the lawyer. So when I talked to her, she was just so thankful that I didn't give up on her and that I was still willing to help her because we did have a great connection, but she was just following the advice of somebody else instead of actually going with me. Now I've lost plenty of, I've lost plenty of listings in the past. And it is something that you have to go back and say, okay, where did I lose them? Mm -hmm. Did I lose them on the, like, was my listing presentation boring? Did I not, did I not ask the right questions or did I not portray what I can do for them good enough? How can I go back? So anytime I ever lose a listing or a buyer, something happens with a buyer that they, you know, it doesn't really happen very often with buyers that they go with somebody else, but you know, it happens every now and then, but figuring out where did I lose that connection? And I mean, I think the more that we are reevaluating ourselves, that's how you grow and build. So no matter what, what industry you're in, if you're in, you know, a mortgage lender, if you're a photographer, if you're a home stager, whatever it is, you have to have your value proposition and you have to know what that is. And you have to be able to go back and figure out, maybe tweak things here and there. Maybe it's the verbiage you're using, like your felt feel found, Mm -hmm. like adding those things into your vocab and getting rid of your cuss words you talked about, which I think is so true. Um, I think that those are all things that um, really will help with growth and all that, which I think it's, you know, coming from you who you want to coach and you want to do all this stuff. I mean, looking at this stuff and really thinking about it, it's all of this is a hundred percent on point. So great. Well, And the thing is like, I'll say this real quick before we get off. I mean, I've, I've been in a place in in different times where I've met like celebrities. I've met famous people. Like I met Kevin Durant and I met like other basketball players that played for the Thunder. And there's people like Kevin Durant that I met. And I was like, oh man, he's the same person. He's super cool. Like he was super laid back. And then there was other people that I met. And I'm like, dude, you're, you're a jerk. Like I don't, but you see somebody, whether social media, and then all of a sudden you meet them in person and they're not the same. And so that's why I'm communicating all this is that we lean upon something you see a guest speaker or you see somebody like Ricky Carruth or somebody out there that's great. And you're like, man, I want to take his systems, his strategies, but you're not him. And then you, you get frustrated because those things don't work. And then, then it comes down to you. And, but yet we tend to blame the systems or we tend to blame those things. Then we look for the next thing 
when we should be looking at us, like how did I communicate and how did I connect? So hopefully that's helpful. Uh, hopefully you all enjoyed that and um, and hopefully you enjoyed it. So. <laughs> so if you're not following, look at Beth, she's got fireworks going in the back. I love it. Um, if you guys are not following Jeremy, follow him, um, on Instagram, he does some funny videos. I know. And I wanted to just kind of really quick touch on some of the stuff. I know that you, uh, one congrats on getting nominated for all the stuff for real producers. We, so real producers, for those of you who don't know, it's like a, it's a franchise, so they can do different awards and different things based on what they want for their divisions and their areas. So we don't have all those awards. We basically just have like producer awards and um, whatnot. I actually have, I was showing people because, so here's me, <laughs> just so happen to have this sitting right next to me. <laughs> um, this was when, so when you are in the magazine, you get like um, spotlights and stuff. So this is when I was in a different one. We're on the cover of the October one for our area right now, but we don't have all of that, um, fun stuff with all these different um, awards, which I think is so cool. And you get nominated by other people. I think that's awesome. That's super So cool. if you wouldn't mind, uh, I just added the links. So if you wouldn't mind, vote for me. Um, that vote would be greatly appreciated. You could see all the different awards on there. Uh, I got nominated for Rise and Grind, um, the best energy and elevator, but I only got um, the elevator. So elevator could mean that I like talking to people in the elevator, or it could be <laughs> that um, I lift people up. Who knows? You can take it however you want. So I was thinking when you said it to me earlier, I thought you meant like you have the best elevator pitch. Like I <laughs> wasn't sure what it meant, but it makes sense. I mean, it's like, uh, it just should be like the hype man award or something like that's, I love that. Cause I think that that is you a hundred percent. So, um, I love it anyways. All right, guys. Well, let's wrap things up today. Um, does and next week, let me tell you who's on next week. Cause I actually think it's a really, really good one. Hold on one second. Um, yes. Okay. So I am so excited. So next week we have Chelsea Peterson on, she's from no affiliation, modern agent social club. So no affiliation to me, modern agent blueprint, anything. I know I use the word modern a lot and it gets a little bit confusing, but, um, she has modern agent social club, which if you guys, um, if you guys use, um, coffees and contract, it's very similar. Um, and I'll tell you the difference really quick because she's, I love her. So Jeremy, this goes hand in hand. So I feel like co and coffees and contract, we actually have Haley Ingram coming on next month, who is going to be talking about um, coffees and contract and some of that stuff. But I feel like coffee and contract is very like content for those of you who don't know what it is. It's like, it's curated content that you can go in and you can um, tailor the graphics. You can change the verbiage of the post. It ga basically gives you the post and the caption for everything. Um, they have guides, they have all different things. It's amazing. Um, but they also have, and if you guys want to sign up, send me a message. Cause I have a link, um, but modern age. So they, I feel like they, my, um, coffees and contract is very like business. Like it's, you know, things like, uh, five things that you can do to renovate your home for $5,000 or, um, things in, you know, like, like very business oriented where modern agent social club is more about promoting you and connecting with your ideal audience. So it's about promoting the things that you like. Like I love Bigby coffee. I love, um, I don't know if I had a life outside of real estate, I'd probably have more things to do, but you know, like promoting things that you enjoy, like, um, for instance, and I know this specifically because I follow her. So Chelsea Peterson loves friends. She loves iced coffee. You know, she's all about curating, um, an experience. So things like that. So she's going to be on talking about marketing and all that stuff, but I love, they're both um, subscription plans and I have them both because I like to mix and mingle. So I like to have some that are more about me and about my business. And then some that are more like um, just educational things. And that's kind of what I was trying to get as educational business stuff. Whereas the other one is more like celebrating you and what you can do for your clients. But Chelsea Peterson's going to be on next week. I'm so, so excited. She has um, really good podcasts and stuff that she does too. And I'm just, I'm so excited to have her on. So 
Jeremy, thank you so much for today. I really appreciate it. And join us next Tuesday um, when we have Chelsea Peterson on. Same time, same channel. Um, we'll put out that link here soon. And thank you, Jeremy. Everybody go follow him if you're not already. Thank you. Theo, I saw your message. I will message you separately.